One of my favourite events to come to, and there's very good reason when you sit with a backdrop like this, with a lovely glass of Paul Roger in front of you, chatting to a gold medalist, Blenheim is one of the places to be, and uh, the event coming up, but first of all, I want to speak to you, Laura, back from Tokyo, you're a gold medalist, um, how, it, is that going to get boring anytime soon? Never, no. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's just amazing to hear it and still get shivers down my spine thinking about it. I mean, just incredible um, to win Poe and then London 52. You have always had so much faith in that horse. Um, you love him like he was an actual human. Um, does this just kind of cherry on the cake? You've got so many times you've gone, I have faith in him. And now you can be like, yep, he is a gold medal winning horse. Yeah, um, look, I've always believed in him and, you know, we've had our ups and downs, but I think it just makes moments like Poe and moments like Tokyo just even more special. And I remember when I was out there in Tokyo, Pippa Funnel sent me a message saying, you know, your best of luck thinking of you. And I replied and I said, I just hope I can show the world just how good he is. And then afterwards she said, well done girl, you showed the world just how good he is. And it's moments like that, that for me, you know, Pippa's my hero, always has been growing up. And people like Pippa know exactly what you've been through and it's not easy um, and things do go wrong. But then when it goes right, it is just amazing. And you get to stand on a podium here at the National Anthem with a gold medal around your neck. Um, and we've been having a play with the gold medal. It's very weighty, can I just say. Um, is this... I mean, can you even put it into words? I mean, have you had time to reflect? Have you had a moment? Because you've been at Question of Sport. You've been at so many different things since you've come back. Is, has there been a moment just to go, oh, right, I've won a gold medal? Not really. Um, kind of looking forward to winter. Um, but Said no one ever. <laughs> I never thought I'd say that. But um, yeah, just to actually have five minutes to myself and just really actually just appreciate exactly what's happened it's been a whirlwind year right from the moment we got selected um i feel like i've just been living in a dream world and um the whole experience of tokyo was something that i could never have dreamt of um let alone actually experienced and uh being on a team with with tom and oliver it was you know right from word go it just was a real had a real feel of team you know we were there to do a job and we all knew that we we could and we should with the horses that we were sat on win that gold medal but you never actually believed it would happen um and standing on the podium i think we all sort of got the giggles and actually we just kept saying to each other is this actually happening because yeah. it was genuinely the most unbelievable feeling and stood there knowing that you've got a gold medal around your neck and you're at the olympic games but you you, you don't actually believe it's happening yeah. um and it just honestly felt like any second we were going to wake up from this amazing dream because the whole thing had been just so dreamy um everything had gone to plan and just yeah it was it i can't i can't explain it and i probably never will be able to but um, it is definitely an experience that I will cherish for the rest of my life. I think maybe it'll be easier to, in a year's time, if I'll interview you again, we'll be able to look back at photos. Um, <laughs> we'll have to do this. And actually then, when it's become more real and it's sunk in, we'll be able to actually go through it all, probably without crying. How many... Poe was a lot of tears. Has this been a lot of tears as well? Do you know, really weirdly, um, not as many tears as, as Poe, because, because it just did... I didn't believe it was happening. And it just was crazy. Um, Poe, I mean, I didn't really believe that I'd won a five star either, but there was so much, yeah, so much emotion on the back of, of everything, I guess. Poe was the first, the first time everything had gone right and London had genuinely proved what I'd always believed in, in him. Um, so yeah, it very, very different feelings um, and actually, I yeah when I read messages or or look at photos and for me the the moment I crossed the finish line of cross country and and when I watched that back I just burst into tears because that for me was kind of the the real moment of the of the Olympics was that cross country round on on him he was faultless and it was you know it was a really tough intense track and everything came up so quickly and he just kept fighting for me and just knowing what he'd been through and where he's come from for me that was just 
you know, that was like winning a gold medal. So to actually win a gold medal was the icing on the cake. Just incredible. And and you talk about um, believing in him and where he came from. And we are at Blenheim um, and we're here at the press day. And um, you've come up through the ranks and there's the eight and nine year old classes, which is going to be available to watch on Horse and Country and the four star. Um, you've come through the ranks of, of these kind of events. Um, and now Blenheim has joined up with the Jockey Club um, and this event is going to for the first time in two years, let's get it back. Um, what does it mean to have the Jockey Club come here, be involved in this event, something you feel so passionate about, Blenheim Horse Trials? I think it's a, a brilliant step in the right direction um, for eventing to be joining forces with an establishment like the Jockey Club. Um, I'm you know, a massive racing fan and been to loads of Cheltenham meetings and the festival and you know what they can bring to the table, I think is gonna be so exciting. Um, and you know, we'd, on behalf of all the riders and owners, I think I'd just like to say firstly thank you to the Jockey Club for taking us under their wing and um, you know to, to help improve what should be one of the very very best events in in the world. Blenheim, the the venue, what it can offer is is unbelievable, um, and I think this is the start of a very very exciting partnership. And it is, I mean, it is the most stunning. I mean, anyone who hasn't come, it is, I mean, watch it on h and or come down to the event because it's so beautiful here. Um, how does this compare to Tokyo? Because that, that was just like, on the TV, it looks so bright and colourful and like sun shining. Like, what was it like competing over there compared to like normally a rainy day in the UK? Yeah, just totally, totally different. Obviously, the, the cross-country course was on this little sort of island yes. thing and... It was tight, like the the venue. It was so small, um, the space. It was amazing that they the thought that they actually built a cross country course <laughs> on such a small landscape. Um, you know, versus somewhere like Blenheim that has got you know these beautiful grounds. And for for me, Blenheim Palace is like the iconic event. Um, you know, the area, the place. You've got the backdrop of the palace with the main arena. You've got a typical old-fashioned galloping cross-country yeah. course. You know, it is it is what, if you said eventing, you know, is what you think of, is this big, you know, massive palace with beautiful grounds and you know, across the lake and all of that. So um, I think it's, yeah, it, it's really exciting to see what, what the Jockey Club can bring to the table and, and move the, the sport forward. I, I feel very strongly that... Um, maybe eventing is a little bit behind the times when you go to things like the global champions tour and with the show in the show jumping and and racing you know at the festival and things like that and i think it's time that we moved forward and and got up to up to speed and up to date with with what's happening in the world with the hospitality and um looking after the owners and encouraging owners to be more involved with such an amazing sport and and i feel like having the jockey club involved is a a huge step in the right direction absolutely and um, obviously fantastic sponsors as well i'm very much enjoying these ones <laughs> so also you're getting so good now i mean you're having to do so much tv so many interviews i remember interviewing you uh, a small little aura um on the press conference at badminton with rayaf having like you were like why am why am i stood up here like um is this getting any easier now now you're a gold medalist i'm just going to keep throwing that at you by the way um, not really. Um, <laughs> I still can't believe it's me and people want to talk to me and I'm just little old me riding my ponies. But um, yeah, it's. I obviously hope I'm a little bit better at talking now than I was back then because I remember just sitting there like very, very shy. And um, But then I was sat between Mark Todd and Andrew and Nicholson. Nicholson yeah. So, you know, I think I was 21 and it was my first badminton and I was between two absolute legends. So <laughs> no wonder I was a bit shy. Yeah. <laughs> I just remember you sitting there and you're just like, okay, what, what? And, and please don't ask me any questions. Please don't ask me any questions. Um, and finally, um, before we go, Dan, London 52, uh, the ledge. I mean, I had to take him off a horse box once and he came off like a panther and he knew he was better than me instantly. I mean, he's such a hero. How is he? How's he doing at home? Is he kind of lording it up now? He's pretty feral um, already. <laughs> um, he's on his holidays. Yep. He's got a little four-year-old um, in the field with him who he bullies. But two, two years ago, he was so shy and he would have been like a mouse in the field. And now he chases this poor little one round and bites him and nudges him around and he is king of the castle. And he's just, his whole demeanor has changed um poe it was after poe his winter holidays last year he was he was a completely different horse in the field and you know when you you've grown up with them and you've known them for so long 
seeing the change in their characters is what I love and it's you know it's why I do it I love working with the horses and learning their characters and and seeing them change and develop and he's just a completely different horse now as to what he was two years ago um, and for me that's re really special. He is such a legend and um, I know uh, you want to have your drink and have a lunch here at Blenheim because it's a wonderful day but I've got to ask when he comes back into work will we still get the videos of him doing his first jumps because I look forward to those on a yearly occasion um, of him doing his acrobatics will they be filmed again? Yeah, I was thinking actually maybe I should sell some tickets and make a bit of money because everyone seems to love watching it and, and no doubt they'll probably be bigger and better than they were last year but um, look, he, he is a character and he loves his job and when he has that first jump, you know, what you see on the video is, is him um, having a whale of a time and, and hopefully I can sit, sit on them and, and not fall off but um, yeah, provide everyone with a bit of entertainment in the winter. Well, yeah, we did film a masterclass. If you want to check that out with Laura, um, did a brilliant masterclass. Practice makes perfect where you did. You just brought him out for a bit of showboating, didn't you? And he's just so confident now, isn't he? But um, I know that you've had him for a long time and it's taken a while to get that out of him. But thank you so much for talking to us. So proud of you um, on behalf of everyone in the country who loves horses. We are so proud of you. Um, and um, thank you so much for catching up to us. And what a great day here at Blenheim. Thank you. Thanks, Laura.